Hello and welcome back. This time we are talking about uh, pre-selection counters. Okay? We want to count something and we want to know from the logic if it's below a certain value I want to adjust or above or equal. Huh? Because my logic needs this. Huh? I need to know if there are already uh, 20 bottles passed. Uh, because then I would need need to have a new box of empty box for the next few bottles. Okay. Pre-selection counter. So I have a counter and this counter value is compared to some other value I can select, pre-select. Okay. How does this look like? Here is the counter. Here is the comparator. Mm -hmm. So here is the C input, which shall be count counted. This here is the counter, mm -hmm. and this is the comparator. This has three outputs, may have three outputs. This means here the counter value is passed, however how many bits there are. Yeah. So this is the counter value. Yeah. And this maybe means the counter value is bigger than the pre preselected value. Okay. This maybe means the counter value equals the pre-selected value, and this maybe means the counter value is smaller than the previous selected value. And here, I get into the pre-selected value. Okay. The, the outputs here might either be static, so that they are always true, or just in goods, uh, goods impulse, <laughs> short impulse, a short impulse. Yeah, if you're using dynamic things afterwards, yeah? both things are possible. So that we do have here a steady, static signal, or just a short signal. Yeah? Both things might be might be used. Okay. How to build this pre-control value? Yeah. Usually it's just a combination of values, a combination of, 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 of voltages. Yeah. For instance, if we have a 5 volt logic, transistor transistor logic, TTL logic, uh, then uh, this is 5 volt equals logically true and 0 volt equals logically false. So if I can manage here to put in the right order of voltages, I'm fine. How can I do this? Yeah. Usually it's done with so-called pull up and pull down resistors. Okay. How is this working? Yeah. Here, it's really thick. Here's my logic input. Yeah. And I need here either 5 volt or 0 volt. Let's stay at 5 volt logic just for. I'm using here a so called pull down resistor in my example. This is connected to 0 volt. And here I have a switch, a contact, and this is connected to 5 volt. Whenever this switch is open, I have a zero volt because this, this resistor here is pulling down this line to zero volt. Okay, this is why it's called a pull down resistor. So open, logically zero. And then if I close it, I have this 5 volt here, 
And if the resist is big enough, usually you use quite big resistors, yeah? so that here are also almost 5 volts left, yeah? then if we close it, we have 5 volts here, logically, 1. Yeah? This is, is called pull down, pull down resistor. You might use a different approach. You might reuse a resistor which is connected to plus 5 volt. Okay. And then here is a switch and this is connected to 0 volt. Okay. If it's open, the resistor is pulling this line up to 5 volts. Okay, so this is a so called pull up resistor, pull down resistor. So if we are open, we have here logically 1. And then if I close the contact, I pull this line down to zero, because if the resistor is high enough, there is not much current running and so on. So if I close it, it's zero volt here, logically zero. Okay. So the possibilities, yeah? How? I managed to do these contacts here. I can select. Okay. Why I'm telling you this with, the, with this pull up and pull down resistor. By the way, there's a different video in the Arduino group. Uh, you can watch it if you want, where we really plug this together. Okay. I will link it. You should have it. Uh, why I'm telling you this? Because there are logic elements which do have these pull resistors already built in, then I do not, do not need to care externally about this. Uh, therefore, I need to know what is a pull up and pull down resistor. Now, how to manage those contacts? You can manage by buying tiny, tiny, tiny little switches. You can only operate with a toothpick or a really sharp uh, thing, yeah? so-called dip switches, yeah? dual inline packages switches. Every switch is only broad of 2.5 uh, millimeters around yeah? and you really can select here with switches yeah? or, or you do it like this. Yeah? do it like this. This is not really how this is working. Uh, show you here. Yeah. Jumper. Two connectors. Join them. Yeah. Easier than tip switch, simpler than a tip switch. Yeah. But also as big as a tip switch. Yeah. This would also be a possibility jumper wire or if you do not need to change it very often just just connect it yeah? connect it to 5 volt or 0 volt yeah? solder it that's it yeah? there are also uh, things where you can select uh, a number yeah? these are turning elements yeah, you can select a number, they have contacts on the side and they will then produce this 5 and 0 volt pattern for you. Okay. Or you can even use here a counter, reference counter or something like this. And you have a button for plus, you have a button for minus and you have even somewhere a display. Yeah, where the counter value is displayed and then you can easily brr, 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 select what you like. Yeah. 
Hmm? Also, would also be a possibility. Hmm? Or you can even have a this uh, block, uh, number block, buck, 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 enter some values. The logic behind producing the reference. Uh, so the pre-selection number can be produced by several things. In the end, it always comes to the point where a pattern of signal is compared to a pattern of signal and then the outputs are if one pattern is bigger or smaller or if they are both patterns are equal. Pre-selection counter. Every time we need a signal, when a certain value has been reached, we can use this. Such things are even used as time, as time elements. If there are longer times, there is somewhere a counter inside and out of this counter Comparator, I can select how many milliseconds or well for milliseconds usually it's not used. There is a mono stable, mono flop used. Uh, we will talk about this in a later video. Uh, but for longer, for longer uh, times, minutes, seconds, yeah, such things are used. Pre-selection counter. Yeah. So now we have counted things. Next time we're dividing frequency because sometimes we end up in a situation where we want to count something fast, something not that fast. Then we need to have a different clock cycle. So if we do have, I don't know, a base frequency of 60 megahertz, let's say, and we only want to count seconds, yeah, we have to divide the frequency down somehow. Next time we're talking about frequency dividers. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.